Do you know, Eric, right. does, does he keep jamming Grim Patron? I mean, we've heard Cranch say all season long he likes to queue up random decks. We're going to find out if he's queued up a random one here in game number two. It's getting underway. Era versus Cranch. Cranch looking to tie things up here, but Era, I guarantee you he wants to sweep this one as quickly as possible and get today off his mind going tomorrow, folks. Yeah, I'd be really surprised if we saw Grim Patron again. He isn't the kind of guy to play decks over and over again. What the heck is that in Era's hand right now? Uh, I think it's a Vulgen? That is... Okay, people liked to, to talk about pros overvaluing Trogzor in GBG when it came out, you know, all the set reviews. Vulgen was by far the most overrated card. Yeah, I've actually never owned one. Uh, there's no reason to. This card doesn't really... Well, it's also in Priest. I mean, come on. So that, that was really the big thing here, is that Priest, everyone thought that the Priest game was going to be stepped up. Uh, counting Blizzard themselves, by the way. Dark Cultist was a scary card. Um, but now in this scenario, like... Vulgen is very good versus this deck. It just doesn't do anything versus anything else. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about Kranich here for a second. This is a deck we don't always see from him. Yeah, he doesn't always like to play uh, kind of these Warlock decks that have the long-term endgame as well as some, some mid-game stuff stacked in here. Uh, but he's playing Handlock this match. I don't know if we've actually seen him play Handlock all season. We've seen him play a bunch of Control Warrior. Handlock, not so much. And this is going to be a little bit of a slower Priest game for Era. Yeah, not quite the uh, turn six victory Ugh. that he was looking. I mean, maybe Sylvanas will be effective turn six victory, but that was unbelievable to watch from Era. Anyone who didn't see it, his game against RDU where he's playing Priest. If you go back and watch the VOD, it's a sweet one. He's playing Priest and wins on turn six. <laughs> yeah, you heard that correctly. He dealt lethal damage on six. Yeah, so a much slower Priest game. This is going to be uh, wants to protect his Dark Cultus for as long as he can. And again, Vulgen, this is really the matchup where Vulgen can shine, is because Handlock typically gets out some major, major big health. Oh yeah, uh, there are a lot of minions with eight health in this matchup, and Vulgen is pretty much Sir Mix a lot in this matchup, so <laughs> he's gonna get to get whatever he wants. Swapping him up. This is a tough spot. I mean, ideally, I think he would really like to get this Void Caller in play, but can you pass up killing this Dark Cultist right now? Yeah, this is going to be a hard spot. It matters how quickly he wants to get Malganus into play, because there are only a few direct answers usually in the Priest deck to Malganus, and if they don't have it on the spot, they're probably dead. This has got to be Vulgen. I don't, I don't see, I don't see this not being Vulgen. Well, he could, you know, if he wants to keep Cranage from getting a wow. demon, he could use Shadow Madness here as a defensive measure. I, I am a little bit surprised by this. You know, wants to save Vulgen for a more critical spot. And does, again, does deny the Void Caller uh, Death Rattle, which can be a big deal. You know, he doesn't have an answer to something like a Malganus or a Jaraxxus right now. Yeah, and Kranich is just going to start to turn up the heat here. I take that back. He does have an answer to Jaraxxus. He's got a Vulgen in his hand. Yep. <laughs> okay, this has got to be Vulgen now. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse but to believe this is not Vulgen. I'm just wrong. I don't know what Air is going to do. I've, <laughs> I've tried to predict it over and over it's again. He's the hardest player to predict deck-wise and play-wise, but usually when you see his plays that look a little weird to you on turns four or five or six or whatever, on turns nine or ten, you start to figure out what he was thinking. Yeah, I mean, this does make perfect sense. I mean, obviously, he's trying to force Cranich to have an Iron Beak Owl if he wants to handle this board position correctly. In the event that Cranich has an Iron Beak Owl, that does mess with his mana on turn six. So you're looking at Emperor Thorson gets cut off. Sylvanas gets cut off right here. Um, you know, lots of different things happen with this. Cranich's turn went from potentially two Imp Gang bosses to Life Tap Iron Big Owl. Yeah, he's going to be able to clear all of Era's board here. I'm, I'm enjoying this new map here. It's a little less interactive, but it interacts with you. These guys move around every time you make big plays and the board shakes and stuff. I, I like it. I'm just cheering for you, man. They're at the Grand Tournament. Yeah. Um, this, this, to me, looks like it could be a Arcanai Soul Priest turn. You know, how much more value are you getting out of this combo, really? Yeah, it's going to be hard to get this much value in a turn with Circle of Protection. But he has two Injured Blade Masters in his I'm hand. I'm sorry, Circle of Healing. Yeah, the two Injured Blade Masters in the Circle, I mean, is this something he wants to pass up right now? Yeah, but I mean, he does give away some value with his Injured Blade Masters, but he's getting to the point where he can play them and use two mana to make them three fives, and it might just be a, a, enough relevant, because if they're three seven, they still don't answer the eight eights that are coming out of Cranish's deck. Yeah, Cranish is jamming away, too. He's having a good time. Yeah, always love to see the players jam out during their matches. If you usually listen to music when you're playing Hearthstone, why wouldn't you do it in tournaments? Yeah. You know, just make I it totally feel like make it feel like any other game. I mean, anyone who's ever seen me play poker, I always have a headset on. Yeah, you never pay any attention to. You're oh, like, of course you, not. You're that guy who's like, hey, it's your turn, by the way, and you oh. take out the headphone, and you go, what? No, 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 just so you know, I'm actually the opposite. I have never slowed a game down in my life. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, you just, you're, you're talking to me. I've played with you before. Oh, I know I what this is like. I never slow a game down. You're just wrong. <laughs> you're just wrong. Hellfire is going to clear up this board position, and Cranch going to be able to reload just a little bit here. 
Uh, these aren't significant turns from him. At this point, I feel like they're still in the fight for the board phase of the game. Right. Uh, someone's going to eventually blow the other person out of the water. Now, here, that light of the Nari was actually a pretty yeah. darn good draw. This creates a pretty big and good board state for Arahe. He gets a 4-6, I'm sorry, a 4-7 and a 3-2 here. And he still has the Vulgin in his hand. I mean, he's still hunting for that one big swing in the game. Yeah, maybe that's what's going on. He's played this matchup before, and he wants his Vulgin as, like, the back-breaking spell which, somewhere in a game. Which is clearly what he's going for. I just, you, you know, I, I'm not obviously very familiar with Priest, especially not with Vulgin. Like, I haven't played this card in six, seven months at this point. Um, so I'm just, I, I'm feeling through this game right now. So to see it from Eris' perspective and to watch him know exactly what to do, it's just such a such a great thing to watch happen. You got to get on Era's level, bro. Which is a very hard thing yeah, to do. I was like, I'm saying. well, this is yeah. this is not an easy task. Uh, both these guys, uh, you know, they're we say it all the time. They make weird deck choices, weird card choices, but it works for them. And they're so it's so awesome to watch them do it because they're so good at what they do and yeah. they play the game so well. Yeah, I'm just gonna add Cabal Shadow Priest to the board. No value. Yeah, tempo Cabal Shadow Priest. Usually not gonna steal too many things here. The big thing here is the pressure that he's getting at this point. Kranich needs to start answering what's going on pretty efficiently. Yeah, Kranich is at eight. Here. Yeah, it does have Molten Giant Shadow Flame though. I mean, what more can you really ask for? Eh, maybe a free win. Maybe a free win. Yeah, walk into the playoffs here, chance of $20,000. This is a tough spot. This is a really tough spot. You know, something I think Kranich wants to avoid is running into, like, a Shadow or Death. Um, at the same time, he also would love to get the Malganus out from the Void Collar, but he's got two Imp Gang bosses in his hand. It looks like he actually is going to go Defender of Argus this turn. Do you want to get the Molten Giant in play first when you do that, though? Do you want that to have Taunt? I think he wants the Molten Giant to be protected from everything mm -hmm. um, and wants to kind of force his opponent's hand in this situation. Well, he gets still Shadow Flame here if he wants to. Yeah, I anticipate Shadow Flame is happening. Yeah. It just gets a little more damage in and then it sets him up for a big turn here. It looks like Kranich might be able to even this game up, this matchup pretty quick. Yeah, even gonna trade here. Ooh, that, was a, that was a pretty good one. It's a good draw, but it's scary right now. That's really what I see about this. And Bulging gonna steal light health and then Holy Nova gonna make quick work. Of, uh, of these board positions, but Malganus gets set into play. Kranich, for Kranich. is a turtle. Wow, what? 33% chance for this to happen. Nails it right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we saw him get pretty unlucky with a Malganus earlier in the season against Sho. It's only, it's only fitting that he gets lucky with it at least once. Now though, this is a spot where I feel like he has to add this Mountain Giant to the board. Yeah. Era's last card has to be Light Bomb or his next card has to be Light Bomb. And uh, as we can see, he has it here. Yeah, just happens to have the light bomb. Well, I was gonna say, you could play North Shore Cleric first here and draw a card. Great catch from yep. Era on this position. Only deals damage equal to its power to each minion. Yep. So able to get the extra card. This is so important right now. Well, that was a, that was a good pickup here too. Not directly gonna affect Kranich's hand, but in this matchup, you know, the 8-8s are so big. Well, not only that, but Kranich, I don't know if he's in a spot where he can life tap anymore. Uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty hard for him to light up here, but he does get to make a pretty big board position here. Era still needs to draw something here. I mean, he, his last turn was great, but he's not out of it yet. That was not it. Yeah, it was a dead draw. So he's going to just try to pick up some extra cards here and hope for the best. I mean, what's his best draw in this spot? Sl uh, Sludge Bulger's not amazing. Valen Shonen's not amazing. Um, maybe Ysera? I'm trying to think. Some big legendary, maybe? Yeah, he wants, <laughs> to, he wants to commit Kranich to having to attack this zombie chow, but with a Sun Fairy Protector picked up, I feel like Kranich has got full control over what's happening. I agree with you. Kranich is going to have a pretty full board here after this turn. Yeah, but you've been able to utilize the Mortal Coil. The second Mortal Coil gets drawn, which means that this Norshire Cleric's going away too. This is a great turn here for Kranich. He's going to churn through his entire deck here. He can pick up an 8-8 at any moment and be able to play it. And he went back to 11 this turn. That Zombie Chow was a major liability for Aerith. He gets this a point. life tap and he picks up a Molten Giant. Which is checked right now. That's, right. you know, this is a, the good thing for Aerith, but the little stuff is what he can't deal with right now. You know, Priest doesn't have a hero power that, that takes care of these kinds of minions. You know, it doesn't have a ton of spells that are going to sweep this board position out, and he's just out of cards. Yeah, Holy Nova wouldn't be the worst here, but it wouldn't be amazing either. Well. <laughs> I am sitting next to you, so. Yeah. <laughs> just leeching off my power. Yeah, it's been unbelievable this season. It does take a lot of power off the board, though, so, you know, he has to do this, and he's still at 27. 
And Krantz doesn't have a ton of pressure left. You have to believe he's going to add the big game hunter just for, ooh, maybe oh, not. Oh, he's instead, yeah. Era's going to face Jaraxxus, Eridor Lord of the Burning Legion. Kranich is in full control of this game. Unless Era has got some way to kill Jaraxxus in his deck, there's no way he's going to win. He's just going to scoop it up and head on to game yeah. number two. Kranich ties it up. Yeah. And look at how cool and calm and collected he is. That, the Jaraxxus draw, not even a big deal for him.